Hello friends and neighbors and welcome back to the Pipe Cottage. This is Alan Harrelson here. So glad you took some time to spend with us today. I'm sitting out here in the yard here at the farm and had a good horse ride today and um, been thinking about what I want to do the next video on and I hope you don't mind the fire. We, I hope you don't mind the golden retriever here. Uh, this is Belle, by the way. She's the oldest dog we have on the place. We got four golden retrievers and a bloodhound on the way, a little old puppy bloodhound, but she's the matriarch. We got her the year we were married, back in 2016. So Belle is joining me tonight. And for those of you who are interested in the pipe, I have cowboy coffee <laughs> from the country squire and uh, for those of you on the podcast you can't see that i'm donning my my hat and in my riding boots because we just finished riding horses here today but um it seemed fitting to to smoke a bowl of tobacco entitled cowboy coffee and it's an excellent representation of what can be done with dark fired kentucky leaf uh, I'll just say uh, a thing or two about this blend while, I, while we're talking about it. It's got an, a, a wonderful fragrance to it that reminds me of a manly cologne. I don't know what kind of topping, if there's any topping at all that's on this, but it's a very manly, masculine, woodsy type uh, room note that comes with this blend. But I find it absolutely captivating. And so I'm going to fire it back up here. Hmm. That's a good blend. Mm -mm -mm. Anyway, I'm smoking it in a Costello 55 uh, pot, which is quickly becoming one of my favorite shapes, and Costello is quickly becoming one of my favorite manufacturers. But the topic for this video, I've got some other things I want to talk about, some products at the end of the video, not products that we are sponsored uh, to tell you about, not products that um, we're getting any money for. It's just stuff that people have asked about, and I want to answer some questions. But for now, the topic of the, the video is sometimes it just doesn't work out. You know, today I was, now there's, we're going to get to pipe smoking in just a minute, but just bear with me on this. Today I was riding uh, my mare. I have a beautiful six-year-old quarter horse mare. Got good pedigree, good lines. She's a beautiful horse. And I bought her in October of last year. And... At first, we had several good rides together, and we had we made some good memories together. But over the past six to eight weeks, she's been showing some different colors. Um, she's spooked several times when she's on the trail. I have fallen off of her three times. I fractured, if not broke, a few ribs the last time I fell off of her. Wasn't fun. Um, she uh, ran away from me when I was saddling her up one day, and she got lost for two nights. Didn't know where she was. A neighbor came and told me that she was in her yard, their yard eating light bread. And then, um, more recently, I found myself on a runaway horse. And for those of you who have never ridden a runaway horse, it's a spooky situation. The horse was running at full speed, and I couldn't stop her. And the only thing that stopped her was my gaining control of her head. And uh, using what's known in the horse world as a one-rein stop. 
thank God I took riding lessons from a stable that taught me how to use the one rein stop. So one thing after another has led to me deciding that this horse is not a good fit for me. It, it certainly wouldn't be a good fit for my wife or one day my children. Um, this horse is going to kill me if I don't get rid of her. <laughs> so, so today I decided that I'm going to sell her and get another one, uh, one that's more suitable. We're going to look at some horses next week that are more suitable. But that's one example of a situation where you do everything you can to make it work, you try to make it work, but it just doesn't. Another example of this, it's not nearly as extended though, but when I was 17 years old, Daddy told me and said, boy, it's time for you to go hunt a job or sign up at the college. So he lined me up a job with a construction crew and on that construction crew it was my job to pick up all the trash and all the scrap wood and put it in a dumpster for the <clears throat> trash company to come pick off from the construction site you know i got there the first morning i drove up my 1973 chevrolet pickup truck with flowmaster exhaust Man, that was a fine vehicle, and whoo, I was fit to be tied. I was so happy to be showing up to that job. I said, I'm going to show Daddy exactly what has to happen to become a man. I'm becoming a man here today. Well, I, I got there about 7 o'clock in the morning, and the boss told me what he wanted done. I said, all right, I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. And I did it for about two and a half hours, about two and a half hours. But about uh, 9.30, 10 o'clock, when I stepped on that first nail and, went, and it went clean through my foot, I said, nope, nope, this ain't a good fit. <laughs> I wasn't cut out for the construction industry. So I made it home to Mama in time for dinner that day at 12 o'clock. <laughs> so I told Daddy, I said, that's not going to work out. Construction work wasn't a good fit. Sign me up at the college. And so that's what I did. Excuse me while I have to light this pipe over and over again. It's a little windy out here this evening. And there's no point in having a pipe channel if you can't smoke a pipe while you're making a video. Know what I mean? Now, a lot of people don't know this, but I'm going to tell you. I was engaged to another woman when I was about 20, 21 years old. And thank God that didn't work out. But at the time, I thought it was a perfect fit. I thought, man, this is the way it's supposed to be. This woman's going to be perfect for me right here. And we had a couple of different arguments. And uh, there was an old farmer friend of mine called Sam. And I want to do another video on old Sam because he's got a lot that he can teach folks. I want to share you that story about old Sam. But old Sam, you know, he would go to the local cafe, which is about two miles from his house every morning, and have breakfast. And uh, at the time, I'd go down there and eat with him pro probably two or three times a week. He was a row crop farmer, taught me a lot about how to work land, how to plow, and one of the smartest things he ever told me is you can tell the worth of a man by how straight he can plow a row. But this particular morning, Sam and I were in the cafe having breakfast and I was relaying to him the troubles and trials I was having with the woman who was at that time my fiance. And uh, by the time we, are, we were getting ready to go, this old black man who had been sitting at the booth right behind us came up to our table he had heard the conversation and he told me he said son a man ought not to have to be slapped in the face but once 
to know that it hurts. From that day on, I realized that me and that woman just wasn't a good fit. Now, I'm sure you can come up with your own examples in life about people, circumstances, etc., etc., where you can uh, talk about things that just didn't fit well. Maybe it was a, a past relationship. Maybe it was a church you attended. Maybe it was, uh, you know, whatever. The, maybe it was a horse. <laughs> <laughs> but for you pipe smokers out there, I see a lot of discouragement in people who move away from pipe smoking when they first start out because they think it's just a not good fit. It's not a good fit. They can't find anything that they enjoy. They haven't found the pipe that they enjoy. They haven't found a tobacco that tastes good. Well, don't give up just because of that. Uh, I have tried for two years to like Haunted Bookshop, but I don't like it. I have tried to like a lot of the Esoterica tobacco blends. I just don't like them. There's only one that I would really pay for, and that's Dorchester, a nice Virginia blend. But for the most part, you won't find me smoking Haunted Bookshop, and you won't find me smoking Esoterica, and those blends are touted. They are well-respected among a lot of people. So what does that have to do with you? There is no set rule or guidelines about what kind of pipe you should smoke and what blend of tobacco you should smoke. I think that, um, and I've been guilty of this myself, sometimes we get into this habit of thinking that pipe smokers should all like a particular set of blends and they should like a particular kind of pipe. Some of the best smoking sessions I've had uh, came with me using a $10 Missouri Meerschaum corn gob and a simple house blend from a local pipe shop. Not anything that was nationally known or, 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 or reviewed on tobaccoreviews.com. You don't have to smoke $1,500 and $2,000 pipes in order to enjoy this lifestyle. And what I've found is that a lot of the different pipes and tobacco blends that are well-respected and well-known are not a good fit for me. They're just not. There's a lot of Burleys that I just don't like. I've tried to like Solani Aged Burley Flake, but I just don't. But the 2022 edition of Cornell and Deal's Eight State Burley is one of the probably top five tobacco blends I've ever had. But that's arbitrary. It doesn't matter. You may like Esoterica. You may like uh, Solani Age Burley Flake. A lot of people like all of that. I guess the point I'm trying to make is make sure that the pipes and the tobacco, tobaccos that you're using are a good fit for you. That they complement your palate. Because nobody has the right to tell you you need to try this pipe and you need to try this tobacco. Try it, but if you don't like it, it's fine. You don't have to keep smoking it. It took me a, a while when I was in my early adult years to learn that it really is not important what other people's opinions are of me unless my opinion of that person is high in and of itself. Um, I've had a lot of friends and a lot of people over the years, including some pipe smokers who had uh, uh, strong opinions about what to smoke and what not to smoke. And um, at the end of the day, 
I just had to learn to be me. And with your pipe smoking journey, especially you people who are just starting out, and I get so many emails, I'm telling you every day, emails from people wanting to know how to deal with family members who don't want me smoking a pipe, how to uh, get started, what pipes and what tobaccos to use. It's a journey that, that not anyone can tell you how to pursue exactly. It's almost like anything else in life. Experience is the best teacher. I was talking to a friend of mine today, and we were talking about horses, and I told him, I said, I'll know better next time what kind of horse I'm looking for because I have a better idea now of what I don't want in a horse. Same thing with pipes and tobacco. The more you do it, the more you'll have a better idea of what you like and what you don't like in what you want to spend your money on and what you don't want to spend your money on. So that's the main point of the video today. I just wanted to encourage those people, particularly who are just starting out, uh, that, that sometimes a pipe or a blend or a pipe blend combination is just not a good fit. And that's worthy of a video in and of itself, pipe blend combinations that do not fit well. Uh, I would be happy to share my experiences with that because I have had several blends that I've enjoyed better in some pipes as opposed to others. And they're not always pipes that are expensive. So um, sometimes it just doesn't work out. Now, I've had a few questions about products that I use and... Um, Several people over the past several videos have wanted to know what kind of lighter I use. I almost always use an IM Corona, uh, old boy. Almost always use an IM Corona. Now, Caribbean makes a similar lighter. Um, they're both made in Japan, but the Caribbeans, they're good. I like them. But sometimes the flints in those can be difficult to spark, can be difficult to get started. I almost always have no trouble uh, getting an IM Corona to spark whenever I strike the flint. Mm. Cowboy Coffee, the Country Squire. That's pretty good. And um, I wanted to give a shout out also in this video to... A guy who made two or three pipe rolls for me, and I use all of them. And I want to share that name with you. And and uh, if you're in the market for a good pipe roll, check out Revenant Leather Company. He's on Instagram. His name is David Goldberg. He's out in Wyoming. And uh, he makes Old West gun belts, lots of different leather things. You can't see this in the video. Uh, and you certainly can't see it if you're listening to the podcast. But I'll place some photographs of this pipe roll on my Instagram page, uh, the Pipe Cottage Instagram page, and you can get some close-up views of it. But the reason I like the, well, several reasons, actually, that I like uh, David's work is the stitching on this is exemplary. The leather quality is top-notch, very top-notch. You can fit a full tin of tobacco in here. You can also fit uh, a pouch of tobacco. You can fit uh, one pipe or even two pipes. And you may be thinking, well, it sounds like it's going to be fairly bulky. No, it's not. I can take this pipe roll and put it in a saddlebag when I go out riding horses, or I can stick it in the console or the pickup truck, and it's easy to carry around and use uh, for any type of occasion. you got to have a pipe roll. If you want to enjoy pipes uh, out, out and about away from home, I do not recommend just throwing it in a Ziploc bag. It's, it's more classy to have a nice pipe roll. Of course, it's not necessary. It's not necessary. It's just my opinion. But uh, I think that uh, a nice leather pipe roll is old-fashioned. It, as I said, it's classy. And it expresses how serious you are about your pipe lifestyle. It really does. It, it, it's an expression of who you are just as much perhaps as the pipe is. So if you haven't uh, 
found a pipe roll that you like yet or you're in the market for one, check out Revenant Leather uh, Company. He's on Instagram, and that's David Goldberg out of Wyoming. I will uh, post his uh, contact information in the video description uh, below here uh, for this video. Now, uh, this is a strange question that I've gotten, uh, but people want to know what kind of hat I wear. Well, this is my riding hat. I don't wear it every day, but I do wear it on days that I go riding. It's a Ceratelli made in Texas. And when I got this hat, um, it did not look like this. I had it custom shaped. It's 100% beaver. So for those who are interested, it is Ceratelli. Uh, made in the USA. I am all for American-made products. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is the end of this particular episode. I've got a lot of different topics on my mind that I want to make content about in the coming weeks. But for now, I just wanted to touch base with you. Hope you've enjoyed this brief moment of time with the Pipe Cottage. I am Alan Harrelson. I'm going to enjoy the rest of this cowboy coffee from the Country Squire. And until we meet again, I will bid you adieu. Thank you for stopping by.